Good morning. We welcome you here today, this beautiful Sunday, to be together in the house of the Lord as we lift our voices, singing our alleluias. We stand together. We begin our time of worship together singing, Rejoice, the Lord is King, and Ferris, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, 
But wait for the gift my father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. singing those beautiful songs, I was thinking how incredible that the God of all the universe, that God created the plan of salvation, would let us come and worship him. We have many requests. The ones I'm going to mention today are our God tells us to bring our requests to him with thanksgiving. Our God loves us more than we love ourselves. And you do love yourself. We want to remember Julie, Judy Bird, a friend of Billy Roberts, Carrie Wong, who is facing additional surgery, Vanessa Hernandez, our church secretary. We need, be, need to be praying for our replant volunteers to be voted on this coming Wednesday. Pray for Tom Howe and Clay Jacobson, who are the liaison with us with Texas Baptist. 
Pray for our church members who still are afraid to attend services for a variety of reasons. Pray for our church council members for wisdom and guidance in their decisions. In 1 Timothy 2, we're encouraged to pray for all who are in authority. And we need to pray for people who are in, are in authority. First, for their salvation. Second, for the decisions that they make that affect this nation. We need to remember Carol Davis. This is the daughter-in-law of Larry and Marilyn. Her father passed away, Jim Pruitt, yesterday morning. Carol's mother, Priscilla, has dementia and is in a difficult, dire strait. We need to pray for Carol and her children and Larry and Marilyn. Would you join me in prayer, please? Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we have a God who listens to us, who wants us to bring our needs to him. We ask that you touch and meet each person that was mentioned in these prayer requests. And for the many prayer requests that were not known, not shown, we ask for guidance and help there. We ask that you bless our church and give us wisdom as we move forward. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen.
So last night, I was out visiting a couple of my friends, and uh, we were visiting at uh, one of my friend's houses, and he kind of lives out in the country, and it was getting late, and we decided to put out a campfire, um, and it was dark, and the fire was just illuminating, and in the background, you hear coyotes kind of going off, um, and it was, it was such a cool moment uh, for me, because at that time, first off, we're getting to get together as a group, and we were really excited about that. Um, but it was a moment for me of peace. And it was a reminder that God is still in control. So often, I feel like everything uh, in my mind, it, that comes to the forefront. We've got so many things going on in this world, yet so many other things like, you know, coyotes just living their life. God is in control of them too. God has given us this beautiful world and he's designed it in a way. And even though, I mean, it seems like chaotic to us, a lot of times it's beautifully put together in a way because God is a beautiful, beautiful painter. And I was so excited just to kind of be able to take that all in and just thank God for the gift of what he's given us. This week, as I've been reflecting over our church and where we need to be going, I think that's just where I'm at again. It's just this idea of thanks. Thanks to God for all the wonderful things that he has done. Thanks for God that he has given us this beautiful city to be a part of. And just thank God in the way that he is taking care of us in ways that we do not fully even understand. So would you go with me in prayer? God, you are the king and the creator. You've given us the seasons. You've kept everything in balance. You've given us the stars and the sky and the sun during the day. You are the maker of all things. I thank you for those blessings that you have given us, and that you, we are constantly reminded of your greatness, but more importantly, your great, just your grace. I thank you for all that you've done for this church. And I thank you for what you're going to do. God, you are a great, great giver of, of good, good gifts. And we thank you for all that you do. In your name we pray. Amen.
is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and so we have come today to worship our Heavenly Father, our loving Savior, and the gracious Spirit that's been promised to us and has been received by us is a part of our lives every single day. It is the blessing of the Lord to come together with you, to sing together praises to God, and to offer in this moment the, uh, the gift of our hearing the Spirit. Uh, it may not be in an audible voice, but we are assured that God speaks to us. If we listen, God will speak. He speaks through the music as His Spirit causes the thoughts to come about in our hearts. He speaks through prayers that people have offered. He speaks through the fellowship of people when you gather from the sidewalk into the, into the sanctuary. The Spirit speaks, and so we want to hear what the Spirit would say to the church today. In God's Word, the Spirit speaks as well through that Word. First chapter of the book of Colossians, it's a writing of the Apostle Paul. It's uh, in the end of that chapter. Paul writes, Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you. I rejoice in what I am suffering for you. And I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of His body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the Word of God in its fullness. The mystery that has been kept for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is the word of the Lord, and thanks be to God for it. My uh, mom and dad never told me one thing they believed they sacrificed for me. I, I never heard from them anything in the way of what they gave up for me. No doubt there were things done without on their parts for my sisters and me, even some of which I was not aware of until I became a parent. It's kind of the way it works. All parents sacrifice. Uh, all children, whether they even now be youth or young adults, may not understand all that's been sacrificed for them by their parents. I never heard of those things uh, from my parents. For us and my family growing up, I think there were some slices of the pie uh, literally, not figuratively, some slices of the pie were sliced thinner for them so we could have more. And it's a part of what I believe the Apostle Paul is getting at here in the first verse read when he's mentioning in the same verse, he rejoices in the suffering. He rejoices in verse 24 in what I am suffering for you. I think my parents had some rejoicing. The rejoicing may have come about in later years, but nonetheless, the sacrifices were there. And so Paul is saying, I rejoice now in some sacrifices that I am making for you, the church, the, the early church here. Um, and I rejoice in the sufferings that I am willing to do for you. Rejoicing in sufferings in the same sentence. How his sufferings could complete Christ's lack of afflictions for the sake of the church, which follows in that verse, um, I, I, I think is beyond me. I don't know that I would even try to explain that to us this morning, but Paul writes that. But in verse 25, he goes on to say, No doubt uh, that he is the one to make the revelation of God in Christ known to the whole world. He is the one. And being the author of uh, two-thirds of the New Testament, he, he uh, earned that. Uh, he told about that. He did that in those, 
three missionary journeys that uh, he took as well to help churches began to, to spread the gospel, to help the churches start there, and then to come back through uh, on second journey, checking on the churches to see how they had grown. And so Paul is the one that's uh, so involved with the spreading of the gospel, this revelation of God in Christ to the whole world. But right in the midst of this writing, he in, inserts this word that's translated for us uh, that is mystery. Uh, there it is uh, in verse 26. Uh, the mystery that has been kept hidden from ages and generations. The mystery that's hidden. It is the one now made known to the saints, he goes on to say. In fact, it is the riches of the glory of this mystery that uh, is made known even to the Gentiles. That's you and me. It's not just for the Jewish people, but it's, it's for the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people, that this mystery is being made, made known to the whole world. This mystery uh, is the word that's used here. And uh, it's a wonderful word of hope for us. But uh, what is this mystery that's been hidden? And he states it here in verse 27. The mystery, the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That it's, it's the Savior who has come. The one whose resurrection we celebrated last week. It's the one that Paul is suffering for. He has mentioned earlier. It is this Savior who is then in us. In our lives, in our hearts that we take in. And that mystery that's been hidden is that Christ is you, in you. The hope of glory. Now, mystery is a is a good a good word. Um, I don't know that I particularly like uh, mysteries uh, as a reading or as TV programs or that kind of thing. But the word grabs me. The, the word grabs me when it's in the scripture. And Paul is saying here in a word that's translated to us, uh, mystery. The mystery has the same root in this word here in the Bible, though, as the verb, which is to initiate, to initiate, to introduce, to, to come into understanding of, of something. In the most common use of the word at that time, uh, the idea of mystery that was used to introduce people, to initiate people into something, is a word that we also know and that we're uh, uh, possibly a fan of, and that's the word secret. Mystery here in this passage has about it the meaning of secret. There's a secret that has been shared with us. There's a secret here that is a tied to initiation, the beginning of what it is that's been revealed to the generations, to the Jews, and to the Gentiles. It's a, it's a secret. It's like a secret password. It's like a secret handshake. Oh, only the ones that have been a part of the group, want to be a part of the group, the ones who are coming into the group, know the password. They are the only ones who know the secret. And Paul is saying here, there, there is a secret that we, that we have with the gospel. It's a part of the mystery of, of what it is in so many ways. But the mystery is a, a key password for us to know and to understand. And that is to understand there is a secret that we have that is a part of the gospel. I don't know that I've thought of it in that way, but I'm reading through what Paul is saying here. And what he goes on to say is that Christ in you is the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. That's something of the mystery that we associate with, a mystery. How does God do that? How does God really 
get in us? How does He live in us? In our hearts we say that because that's the center of our being, but that's the mystery. It, it is that Christ is in us, the hope of glory. And how He is in us is through His Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, who comes to live in us when we believe in Christ and we accept Him. And, and He becomes a part of our lives, and it's the Holy Spirit who is Christ in us, the presence of His Holy Spirit, the riches of this glory uh, known by revelation to us, and as Paul comes on to say here in verse 28, it is what leads us to be fully mature in Christ. The reason for the presence of God's Holy Spirit in our lives is so that we might grow in Him, so that we might become fully mature, so that we would grow up in Christ. To accept Christ as Savior and to seek diligently faithfully, consistently, to make Him the Lord of our lives. That's what we say to Him. That's what we sing about Him. He's our Savior and Lord. Savior meaning that He is the one who died for us. He paid the ultimate price. He's, he is the cost for our salvation that was paid in God's love. And so He is our Savior, but He desires also to be the Lord of our lives, the CEO, the CFO, the time manager, the one who directs our paths and our daily living. And as we allow Him to do that more and more, it is our understanding that the Holy Spirit is a part of our lives, not something to be fearful of. I don't know how it is for you. I grew up, it was the Holy Ghost. And I, I have to tell you, any ghost I was associated with back in those days uh, was, uh, unless I guess Casper uh, was about as friendly as it got in the way of ghost. And so I, I was grateful to move into some of the translations of Scripture and people who began to talk about the presence of God in our lives as the Holy Spirit. Holy still scares me a little, uh, especially people who think they're holier than I. But, uh, but the idea is the Holy Spirit that's in me, that is God in me. And the Holy Spirit comes in our, into our lives. No second blessing. No subsequent ritual that we have to have or go through to have Christ living in me is to be our ally. The one who is with us, who walks with us, who takes steps by steps with us, who guides us, who speaks to us, who gives those gentle nudges, and sometimes they're not so gentle as to keep us on track, like those tiny little booster rockets that, that uh, send the spaceships into outer space. I understand there's a constant source of the rockets guiding and keeping the, uh, the spacecraft on the right route, and so the Holy Spirit does that in our lives. And so it is wonderful to think about that Spirit in these days. How does that Spirit operate? How does that Spirit um, do its work? in our lives. I think to look at it, we look at some of the things that the Spirit does, that Jesus said. God's Word says that the Spirit does. John 14, that wonderful chapter that begins uh, Jesus telling His disciples He's soon to leave them, and He says, I'm leaving, but I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to be nervous. I'm sending one after me. After I'm physically, bodily gone, I, there's one coming who will be with you. And he goes on to say about that Holy Spirit, I will ask the Father and He will give you another advocate to be with you. An advocate that our Savior is. Our Savior was for the disciples. Remember those times He prayed for them? Remember His prayers in the garden? It's, it's an advocate, one who is to be with us and to speak for us and Jesus said, He will be with you and help you forever. The Holy Spirit is an advocate for us. He's an advocate with the Father. He speaks on our behalf to the Father. He's able to defend you and plead your cause. The, the work of the Holy Spirit is to work in our hearts so that we are 
understanding where God is guiding and directing. Uh, your secret ally is also a helper, that, that helper to us in our lives. He is available to assist and aid and furnish you with relief. It's a part of the role of the Holy Spirit. Don't know how it's been for you, but no doubt, like for me, there have been those times it just seems you, you can't get a, a rest. You can't get a break, but more than that, it's like you would like a, a good night's sleep, you know, a full night's sleep. And, and I'm, uh, I'm finding that sometimes it, it is a work of the Holy Spirit in my life that just calms my spirit, helps me to rest. There's a, there's a relief that the Holy Spirit can give. He's our helper to help us in our times of anxiety and worry and, and so much concern. He is our helper. He's our advocate. He's our helper. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. He comforts us, especially... Uh, through love and care of those around us. Oh, how many times, to me, the Holy Spirit of God has a human face on it. It's a face of someone who cares and a, someone who comforts. In 2 Corinthians, the first chapter and the fourth verse, we're reminded that the Father of compassion and God of all comfort who comforts us in all of our troubles and trials so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. It's been for me, no doubt, like it's been for you at times when people said to me, I, I found your words comforting. Uh, I found your presence comforting. And when I would try to reach back in my mind and figure out what was it exactly I said or how did I act or behave, I, I couldn't pick up on anything. I think what the truth is, is that in that moment, the Holy Spirit used me to comfort someone else. I don't know that I did it may have been intending to, may have wanted that for the other person, but the truth is the Holy Spirit of God simply used me to use some words of comfort. You know He does that for you. He comforts others by your mere presence. It's your demeanor is comforting. And so our secret ally, the Holy Spirit, is one who is our comforter. Our secret ally is also the one who is our intercessor. We know about that word. Um, he's, he's best known to interpret our groanings to God, our Father. The Bible says we can't even voice our concerns, and so they're like groans. There are some of those just utterances that are not words. The Holy Spirit is the one who interprets those to the Father so that the Father knows what's really happening for us. The Holy Spirit is the one who is our intercessor. He, he goes between God and us to help God know to know what is happening. He actively works as well as intercessor between you and others. Wonderful little thought that I've thought of lately, that in the role of intercessors, not only between God and me, but it's also between others and me. The Holy Spirit does that. He's the intercessor that comes between you and others. At times it may be between you and your children. Sometimes it may be between you and your parents. But God is the intercessor that is also the one who comes to stand in the gap between us to intercede. Sometimes He, he does it in the pain of the moment. Sometimes He does it in the, the arguments of life. We may be arguing with God ourselves, and so God, through His Holy Spirit, is the intercessor for us. Sometimes it's when we're arguing one with another, and the Holy Spirit has that amazing ability to intercede, maybe to give a break, shed a little light that, you know, it might be good if I considered what the other person was saying. And, and in those moments, sometimes, honestly, when there's more heat than light, and, and people can have their differences 
It is wonderful that our secret ally in the Holy Spirit is the one who can interpret to others and can interpret what others are saying to us as we need to know and to hear to help us to be in the place that God would want us to be. He is our intercessor. He is the type of intercessor that would say, uh, pray it would be as well the prayer of David in Psalm 139 Verses 23 and 24 in particular. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. How wonderful it is to know that it is Christ in me, the hope of glory in the presence of His Holy Spirit, that allows me to get at truly understanding others. I I am convinced that whether it might be in family or among friends, certainly true in a church, when the volume goes up, the understanding goes down. It's in the marriages and the uh, marriage counseling has been uh, a, a great experience of mine in, in pastoring through the years. And, and I've, I've had them in my office. I know, I know what happens. When the volume goes up, the understanding goes down. More than one couple, I've had them to, to sit. To, I would help them to move the chairs where they face one another. That's a, that's a good part of understanding. That's a good part of allowing the Holy Spirit of God to, to intercede for us is to be able to see the other person, to look at them directly. And then there have been those couples in which I've asked for them to hold hands. Not that it's so that it's romantic. It's that I felt like that would be a safer way to keep one from beating up the other. And, and so you, they held hands, though, uh, because in that moment I'm praying that the Holy Spirit would intercede in their relationship and help them to understand. It is a wonderful ally that we have. And and finally, there's that one that comes from the Amplified Bible. I I used to read that um, uh, version, uh, translation really, so often because there, there are like three or four words given for every word that's in the in the, uh, in the Bible, amplified. That's the meaning of it. It gives all these words. And one of those words I, I picked up in those days of reading the uh, Amplified Bible was that the Holy Spirit of God is our standby. Standby. Always there in emergencies. He's our standby. When maybe it's the shock of grief, it may be the overwhelming sense of what do I do next, what is happening, we are reminded that He's our standby. Psalm 46 again in that first verse. That God is our refuge and He's our strength. He is an ever-present help in trouble. It's amazing what God has given us in the Holy Spirit. He promised before He ascended. We celebrated last week His death, His burial, His resurrection, uh, the sightings on earth, eating with people, and then His promise that as He was going to sit at the right hand of God, He would have one who would come to be present with us. And so I'm, I'm sure it's in things I've read. I know it to be true in things um, uh, that folks much smarter than I, much more learned and well-read and well-written have put together. But for me, it's real. It, it is amazing how you think about God in the Old Testament, God of creation, how God is there in all things. God is overall. Kind of the umbrella is over all the world, the universe, all those things that he's created. And then it's kind of like he funnels down into Jesus Christ, God in us, Uh, like us. It's really, in that case, it's like us, God like a human being, God in the flesh. And and so it is that Jesus uh, became God with flesh on and, and was like one of us. 
And now we have in that great deciphering of God's desire to be with us that it is God in us in the presence of the Holy Spirit. I think it's what God's wanted all along. He's wanted for us to invite Him in, to take Him in, and then He has that residing in us in His Holy Spirit. You have that ally in your life uh, at the time of temptation. You have it at the time of trial. You have the holy presence of God that is with you in whatever situation, circumstance you may know in life. He's there. He's for you. Secret ally. Secret only because you have been introduced to the Savior. You've been initiated into the household of faith. And so I share with you today that we come down to this moment of commitment and dedication, uh, invitation we call it. It's to not only to accept Christ, most important. First of all, it's the initiation for us into the kingdom of God to come to understand that Jesus died for me. I don't just believe in, in, in Him, that He lived at some time, but I believe in Him enough to trust Him with my soul, my eternal destiny, but also my daily destiny to make Him my Lord. It is that we have that leadership of God's Spirit to do that. But it's also, as a part of the invitation, that ongoing every Sunday, every day, when I decide to live for Him, that I will follow Him. I will do what He wants me to do, and I do it in the power of His Spirit. Would you join me in praying now for God's Spirit to speak to different ones of us? We like for people to come forward. We've always loved that time in which people come and we celebrate with them if they've invited Jesus into their hearts and lives for the first time, if they, their promise is to be baptized. We love that. But we love also as followers of Christ because it's the riches of God's grace when we sense that there is something that God is saying to the people in our fellowship. God's directing them in some way. It might be in some ministry. It's some form of service that they can give to other Christians. Would you join me in praying that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, would have the freedom to speak to each of us. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, through the grace of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of Your Spirit, I, I know that it's sometimes you speak to us, Father, and it's so loud, it's, it's almost audible. But, Father, sometimes you're so gentle. It's a whisper. It's a nudge. So I just pray now, in the strong name of Jesus, for that wonderful privilege that is ours, that your Spirit would speak to us. Father, show us what it is that you have for us in the way of First Baptist Church in these days uh, when we are considering replant, when we are considering what all that will mean. Father, speak to us. Show us what you would have us to do and to say and to be through the presence of your Holy Spirit. Father, that it could be as well today that you desire for uh, some brokenness in relationships to be restored. And so we turn to you as our helper, our comforter, our guide, our friend, and pray that your spirit would lead us. Maybe it is, Father, we need the courage to be the one that takes the first step to say to the spouse, I'm sorry. Father, I know that it is your desire through the riches of the glory and uh, uh, it, that's expressed in the grace of Jesus Christ, that we be the ones who are reconcilers to one another. So there could be some kind of broken relationship in a friendship that says, Father, you would give us the strength to lead in the way that you want us to lead, whether it's business or church or family. Lord, that you, your spirit would have the full reign in our lives at that point. Father, it might simply be today and in the recognition and desiring to honor you
by honoring your Holy Spirit that it's time, maybe it's past time, Lord, for some of us to say, you know, it's, it's time for me to get serious about Jesus. I need to say something about Him to my family, to my friends, to my neighbors. I, I'm, I'm asking God to give me the courage to invite somebody to church. I'm in, inviting the Holy Spirit to work in my life enough that I will pray that God will lead me to that special one that we're all looking for in this year in the life of our church, that we could invite to church, that we could share Jesus with. Father, your Spirit does that kind of thing because you, you give us the strength to do that. Father, I, I intercede for our congregation. We want a dynamic, live, vital fellowship on this corner. And Father, I know that in the power of your Spirit, we can have that. You want that as well, we believe, in this place. And you will show us, show us if it's not. But Father, convict, convince in this moment of invitation. We give to you for your Spirit. You do as you will. And we will give you the honor and the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus paid it all. It's a wonderful hymn. You know it by memory. You can turn to the hymn page number. Uh, we sing in honor and praise of God and His Spirit, His presence in our lives and in our church now as we stand and sing, as you respond, as the Spirit leads. Let's sing. Kelly, thank you each one for being here today. Uh, some just quick words on the way out. I certainly uh, offer Sean, Kelly, anything. I'm, I'm going to cover the announcements, I think, but anything you have. Um, all right, thank you, Steve. Steve is uh, reminding me, uh, and I appreciate the reminder. Uh, you know, the older I get, the more I find my rememberer doesn't work as well. And so uh, I, Steve's reminding me that we have the offering box. It's locked. It's at the back. If you have offering envelopes, there are offering envelopes there to place there. If you want to uh, put the uh, gift of the check or the cash, you can do that in that little slot. It'll be protected until it's opened by the, uh, uh, the group that uh, counts that on, uh, 
on Monday. So we have that back there. Thank you, Steve. We, you can make that offering that way. You can make it on your way in. But we have church council uh, for those that are a part of that. The different uh, heads uh, of the uh, groups in our church will meet uh, this Wednesday at uh, 5.30, this coming Wednesday. And then this coming Wednesday as well at 6.45 is the quarterly church conference. And uh, that's uh, when we present uh, the business matters of the church. Uh, you can understand uh, better about the finance, how our church works, committees report, individuals share with us. And then this week uh, is such an important time for us as well. Um, we will um, decide on the uh, replant team of our people uh, that will work with uh, Clay Jacobson in particular in the replant of our church. We'll vote on that group who will be uh, leading us uh, through that time. So we invite you to come take part in that. I, I would say two things about that. One is our attendances at our church conferences um, are absolutely wonderful. Thank you for your faithfulness to the Lord by coming to those times uh, of business matters. I think sometimes that, that's an opportunity for the church to be uh, the greatest witness uh, that there is is how we conduct ourselves, how we conduct our business of the church. And the second thing is for the ones that have volunteered for our uh, uh, replant team, thank you. Uh, it tells me your hearts are in the right place. You want to serve. And so, uh, and so we'll discuss that on this Wednesday evening. So again, thank you for being here. I trust it's been a, a good week for you and that the Lord through his Holy Spirit will bless you and lead you in this coming week as well. So let's pray together, and uh, uh, then we'll sing together, and then we'll be dismissed. My prayer for you simply is this, with eyes wide open, that God would bless you with the leadership of His Holy Spirit each day in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing together. Let's sing, He is Lord.